Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.4, Powers of 10 and Exponents. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use an exponent to show powers of 10? Now, please turn in your GoMath workbook to chapter 1, lesson 4, found on page 9, and let's get started. Now, before we begin solving problems in this lesson, I want to talk to you about our powers of 10 and exponents. Expressions with repeated factors, such as 10 times 10, times 10 can be written by using a base with an exponent. The base is the number that is used as the repeated factor. The exponent is the number that tells how many times the base is used as a factor. What I also want to point out is we can write this in word form and that would be the third power of 10 and we can also write it using an exponent showing the base which is 10 and the exponent, which is 3, because we're repeating the factor 10 three times. Now, let's take a look at question number 2. Our job is to write this in exponent form and word form. So let's take a look at what's given for number 2. They give us the problem 10 times 10. Now, my first job is to write this in exponent form. And I know that if I'm going to write a number in exponent form, I need a base, and I also need an exponent. Well, my base is the number that is used as the repeated factor. So in this problem, I know that my repeated factor is 10. So I'm going to write down my base as 10. Now, my exponent is the number that tells how many times the base is used as a factor. And what I know is that 10 appears two times. Here's once, and here's twice. So my exponent is going to be a 2. So what I have is a base of 10 and I have an exponent which is 2 and that represents 10 times 10. That 10 is being multiplied 2 times. Now I also have to write this in word form. So what I'm going to do is this. In word form I'm going to start out by saying the now I need to look back at my exponent and my exponent is a 2. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to write down the second because my exponent is a 2 and it's going to be the second power of 10. And that's how I write this in word form. So we now have our number written in both exponent form and we have it also written in word form which is the second power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number three together. Once again, our job is to write this in exponent form and also word form. Now, when I go to write my number, my expression in exponent form, I know once again that I need a base and I need an exponent. Well, once again, the base is the number that is used as the repeated factor. And in this problem, when I look at it, I can see very easily that my 10 is the repeated factor. So when I go to write my expression in exponent form, I'm going to write down my 10 as my base. Now, I also need an exponent. And once again, the exponent tells how many times the base is used as a factor. So I'm going to make my count. I see that 10 multiplied 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So what happens is my base is a 10 and my exponent is going to be the 4 because we're multiplying that 10 four times. One, two, three, four. Now, I also have to write this expression in word form. So just like we did with question number two, I'm going to start out by saying the... Now this time, guys, my exponent is a four. So I'm going to say the fourth, because the exponent is a four, the fourth power of 10. And I now have my expression written in both word form and exponent form. And what they both say is, is we're multiplying that 10, that factor, four times. Okay, let's take a look at question number five. Our job is to find the value of the expression for number 5, and for question 5, the expression given is the whole number 4 times the second power of 10. 
Well, in order to find the value of this expression, I'm going to write a pattern using the whole number 4 and my powers of 10. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to bring down my 4 and I'm going to write down 4 times and I'm going to start out with the 0 power of 10. Now, what happens next is this. That becomes 4 times 1. So if you have the 0 power of 10, that's equal to 1. And when I multiply 4 times 1, that's going to give me a 4. Now I'm going to continue on with my pattern. I'm going to write my 4 down again, and this time I'm going to multiply 4 times the first power of 10. And when I do that, what that means is I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to multiply it by 10. And when I multiply 4 times 10, that's going to give me 40. Now I can't stop yet with my pattern because, as you can see, my exponent here is a 2. So I'm going to continue on with my pattern and I'm going to write down next 4 times the second power of 10. And what that means is I'm going to take 4 and I'm going to multiply it by 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. And when I multiply 4 times 100, that takes me to 400. Now, I want to point something out here to you so that you can see how this works. When I look at my exponents that are given, I first of all have the 0 power of 10. You're going to notice that there's no 0 behind my 4. Well, when I look at the first power of 10, you're now going to see 1 0 behind the 4. When I get to my second power of 10, you're going to see that there's 1, 2 zeros behind my 4. So that exponent tells me how many zeros there should be in my product. So when I find the value of 4 times the second power of 10, that turns out to be 400. And I can check myself again because I know that my exponent is a 2, and I should have two zeros in my product. Now, let's take a look at question number 10 together. Once again, we're going to find the value of this expression. And in this expression, we're given the whole number 7, and that's times the third power of 10. And once again, we're going to use our pattern, multiplying the whole number 7 and our powers of 10. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to first of all write down my 7. And I know that I'm going to multiply that by the 0 power of 10. Now remember. When I have the 0 power of 10, that means that I'm going to end up multiplying 7 times 1. There's no zeros behind my 1. My exponent is a 0. And when I multiply 7 times 1, that's going to give me 7. Now, I can't stop yet in my pattern because my exponent here is a 3. So I'm going to continue on. And now I'm going to write down 7 times 10 to the first power. And when I do that, that means 7 times 10. And when I multiply 7 times 10, that's going to take me to 70. Now I'm going to continue on with my pattern. We're not quite done yet. So I'm going to once again write down a 7. And this time we're going to multiply it by the second power of 10. And when I do that, that becomes 7 times 100. And if I multiply 7 times 100, that's going to take me to 700. Now we're almost there because once again, my exponent is a 3. So we're going to continue on, and we're going to do the next part in our pattern. I'm going to write down 7 times, and this time it's 7 times the third power of 10. And when I do that, that means I'm going to take 7, and I'm going to multiply it by 1,000. Now, when I multiply 7 times 1,000, that takes me to 7,000. Now, let's do our check and see if things look like we've worked things out the right way. I know that my exponent is a 3, so I should have three zeros behind my 7. Let's make our count. I count 1, 2, 3. So I know that 7,000 is the value of my expression. Now, let's take a look at question number 12 together. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says... The moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth. What is this distance written as a whole number multiplied by a power of 10? So what I know is this. I know that the moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth, and they want me to write that distance as a whole number multiplied by a power of 10. 
So what I know is this. I know that 240,000, which is my number that's given in the problem, I know that that is the same as, now we're going to write this down, it's the same as 24 times 10,000. Now, the way that I know that is this, a good way to check. I know that in 240,000 I have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. And in 10,000 I also have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So I know that 24 times 10,000 is the same as 240,000. Now, what I also know is, I know that 10,000 can also be written as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And the reason I know that is because, and let's check it, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 tens. Now, if I have four tens, I can now simplify that and I can write it as a base of 10 with an exponent of four. So I'm gonna take that and write it in exponent form. So I now have the fourth power of 10. So what I can also do is I can drop down my 24 and it now becomes 24 times the fourth power of 10. So what I've done is, I've written my distance as a whole number multiplied by a power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number 13 together. It's another one of our real world problem solving questions and it says, the sun is about 93 times the sixth power of 10 miles from Earth. What is this distance written as a whole number? So what I know is, they give us the whole number 93 times the sixth power of 10, and they want us to write this distance as a whole number. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna use my knowledge of patterns, and I'm gonna multiply my whole number, which is 93, times my powers of 10, and in this case, it's the sixth power of 10. So I'm gonna start out by writing 93 times the zero power of 10, and what that means is, it means 93 times 1, which is going to give us 93. Now, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with my pattern. I'm now going to write down 93 times the first power of 10, and that's going to give me 93 times 10. And when I multiply 93 times 10, that takes me to 930. Now for the next step in my pattern, I'm going to once again multiply my 93, but this time it's going to be by the second power of 10. And when I multiply 93 times the second power of 10, that means 93 times 100. And when I multiply 93 times 100, that becomes 9,300. Well, I can't stop yet because once again I'm trying to get to my exponent of 6, so I'm going to continue on with my pattern. I'm now going to write down 93 times the third power of 10. And what that means is, is that means 93 times 1,000. And when I multiply 93 times 1,000, that's going to give me 93,000. Now, I'm going to continue on with my pattern. And I'm going to write down 93 times the fourth power of 10. And what that means is it means 93 times 10,000. And when I multiply 93 times 10,000, that takes me to 930,000. Now once again, we've got to keep going because we're trying to get to that exponent of 6. So I'm going to continue on with my pattern, and I'm going to now write down 93 times the fifth power of 10. What that means is, is it means 93 times 100,000. And when I multiply 93 times 100,000, that's going to give me 9,300,000. Now we're almost there. I'm once again trying to get to my 6, so I'm going to write down one more step in my pattern. I'm going to write down 93 times the 6th power of 10, and what that means is, is it means 93 times 1 million. 
Now, when I multiply 93 times 1 million, that's going to give me 93 million. Now, let's check this out and see if things look like we've worked this out correctly. I once again know I'm trying to get to an exponent of 6, and if I see an exponent of 6, there should be 6 zeros in my answer. So let's make our count. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what I know is it should be 93 million as our answer. Now, let's take a look at your homework assignment for tonight. I would like you guys to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six in your Go Math workbook for tonight. And these questions can be found on page 10. Now, don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you guys to let me know. Do you feel like you're number one, a novice? Do you feel like you're number two, an apprentice? Number three, a practitioner? Or number four, an expert? Now, don't forget, your homework assignment for tonight will be questions 1 and 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6, found on page 10 in your GoMath workbook. I hope you guys have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Bye.